I have been tested and I've come through those trials. Today, with three matches left, we could win the league. Greetings, my excellent friends, and welcome back to episode 27 of the Culture Club. I'm Kirk Sheridan. It's amazing what a 3-0 victory will do for morale. So as you know, after our last match against Hastings, I was distraught. So I pulled a classic morale-boosting tactic out of the bag, which is very much in keeping with the Culture Club ethos. With the team at such a low ebb, they needed to get back to winning ways. So I scheduled a friendly against a low reputation team and we made actually really hard work of it. We only won 1-0, but as you can see, we dominated the game. Thankfully, it did the trick and we took that little boost into a 3-0 victory against Ashford United where I made a bold call. I dropped Joe Gale. He's going to be a permanent fixture in the team in future, I'm absolutely sure. But since coming back from injury, he's not been the same player. So I played a winger on the left. Unfortunately, Ballinger got injured and has been ruled out of the rest of the season. But Addy came on in his place, picked up a goal. It works. So I'm sticking with that formation for the next game. And as a result of all of that and offering some new contracts to players to retain them for the next season, we are back to an excellent club atmosphere to turn around the atmosphere within one league game from where it was previously that's the culture club in practice and this was all made even better because while we defeated ashford 3-0 corinthian casuals drew with vcd who are 21st major slip up for corinthian casuals so we're four points ahead We've pulled away, and I am quite frankly amazed. They've absolutely let us off the hook here. So today, if they slip up again, if we win and they lose, we win the title. We are away to Bowers and Pitsy, who are in fifth place, and Corinthian Casuals are away this time at Concord. So I'm not confident in our result, but... After how Corinthian Casuals performed last time out, I'm not so confident in theirs either. Here is the team that has that slim chance of coming away with the league title today. We've got Graxic in goal, Hoyle, Leslie Smith and Watson at the back with Vincent and Williams at wing back, Hinshelwood and Wharton in midfield, and then up front that trio of Addy, Fondop and Bell. On the bench, we've got Paddy Wharton, Billy Bingham, Joe Gale, Dejon Noel Williams and Jordan Iner. So lots of attacking options to bring on if we need them. Only the one defender. You know me. Bowers and Pitsy are 17th in the form table. I have suddenly become a lot more confident that we could come away with three points today. Can we get some consistency back? Can we make it two wins on the bounce? If we can, I think that will give the team a lot of confidence going through the rest of this run in, even if we don't secure the title today. But it is Bowers and Pitsy on the ball to begin with, just playing things fairly gently. And Graxic takes it. A bit of a dramatic take there. Probably didn't need to actually dive for that one. But Hoyle is on the ball, plays it forward to Addy, who knocks it to Hinshelwood, who's got... And Wharton, plenty of space in the middle of the park. Bell under a little bit of pressure from the defenders, but not a huge amount. They're not really pressing that effectively. So Wharton plays a beautiful ball down the line to Vincent, who has plenty of time. Three players in the box for us, and it goes over to Fondop, and it is in! In the fifth minute, we take the lead. This is something. This is definitely something. Oh, what a fantastic start. Fantastic cross from Vincent. A beautiful play ball from, from Wharton that, that set that move off. So in the first 10 minutes, things are going swimmingly. Corinthian casuals are drawing. Nothing much going on there. So we're now six points clear. If it does stay like this, one more point and we've got the title secured. McWilliams floats one over to Addy and it's over the bar. Vincent picks up a booking. 
I need him to ease off the tackles. I could really do without him being suspended. Because obviously with Ballinger out, I don't really have another natural option at left wing back. Aina's played well when he's come in, when he's had to play there. But he is a naturally right-footed player. And uh, it does slow the attacks down when he has to just stop and cut back in to his, uh, to his right foot to float across him. Hinshelwood, though, puts the ball into Wharton, who's close to the edge of the box. Fondup just takes his time on the ball, plays it to Wharton. Then Addy, we're just very gently taking our time here, trying to work the opening. Addy to Wharton. Vincent is clean through to put a cross in again. And Fondup is in there, and it's a second! It is a second goal with half an hour of the game gone. Ooh, this is, um, well, it says there, this is getting embarrassing, but it's not embarrassing for me. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm very, very pleased. As I say, this is most unexpected. I really did think at the end of the last episode, we were out of it. We were crashing our form. Morale was through the floor. And it took all of my thinking to actually get this team back on track. To think, what is the right thing to do for their morale? How can we get them believing in themselves again? Not just clicking the buttons in the football manager way. No, actually thinking in real life what's going to make the difference. And they needed to play a match, see themselves win. That friendly set this off. Crucial, crucial managerial decision there. We have had a lot. To shots on target. I am very happy with how things are going so far. We've got a few players not really even playing at the top of their game, but Bowers and Pitsy are not threatening at all. And lo and behold, they get a corner. Uh, which we do clear. Vincent manages to head the ball clear, but their player manages to get back onto it. Are they going to fashion an opportunity from this, or are we going to be able to break? Looks like they're taking their time on the ball. But we do press a bit. Oh dear, Bird has worked into some space there. But Graxic stands tall. That is a chance that Wharton would absolutely have conceded. To not even test the goalkeeper from that distance is really quite unfortunate for Bird there. And oh my goodness me, that was... Uh, off the crossbar, yet yeah, definitely time to make some substitutions. They are looking significantly more dangerous than they were previously. So I think it's time to probably get a bit more steel on. Addy has not been match fit and is starting to tire. I do need to take him off, really. So this is a chance for Gale to come back on and pick up his advanced playmaker duties. Hinshelwood isn't playing brilliantly, but I need to protect the team. I need to make sure we keep with 11 players on the pitch. So Vincent will come off for Ina. That's enough, I think, for now. Let's see if we can get another clear opportunity. We have a throw in. Ina takes it to Gale, and they nick the ball off us. Hmm. Starting to not be quite as confident as I was at the start of the match. This second half has definitely been less effective for us and uh, Bird is, has been playing brilliantly this season I saw uh, before the match he's scored 23 goals so far that is quite the finish and now I have some real thinking to do I need to shore up this defense because as it stands they're cutting through us too easily right simple change that I'm going to make is drop these guys back. They're still going to play the same role, but they're just going to start their defensive duties a little further back. No other changes, because that is our best defensive lineup. So Corinthian casuals, how are they getting on? They are winning now against Concord. Oh no, and they've got a free kick. Oh, it's past the post. Oh, from being so confident, this is not a nice way to be ending this match with them all over us. Just four minutes of injury time remaining. Can we hold on? We can. We can. We secure that victory. Brilliant. I think that's the time for outstretched arms. We weren't at our best, but we got the result. Motivating that team once more. This is what it's all about. <gasps> oh my word. I did not see that. If any of you saw that in the scores, 
towards the end of that match, I was panicking and just keeping an eye on the timer. Corinthian casuals went ahead in the 70th minute. Concord scored in the 80th, then had a player sent off in the 86th minute and scored a winner in the 88th. We're seven points clear with two games left and we're going into the National League South. I can't believe it. I genuinely can't believe it. This has been such a roller coaster of a season. We've had to make tactical tweaks. I've had to inspire the players. I've had to work much harder as a manager than I have at any other time. We did this without any players in the Dream 11, remember, as well. And I'm at a loss for words. We were only third favourites in the end. That's five back-to-back -back promotions. From Tier 11 up to the sixth tier into the National League South within five years, winning every division along the way. The board have raised next season's wage budget to £4,500 per week. But interestingly, they do think that we will start making a profit. Are they expecting we get promoted again? That can't be true, surely. I've got some very, very happy players here. I promised Watson, Wharton, Graxic, Fondup and Ina when I signed them that we would get promoted to the National League South next season. We've done it a year early. And just a day after we win the league, due to the club's deteriorating financial state, the board have decided to temporarily cease bonus payments for players on non-contracts until the financial outlook of the club improves. It's clear that Liam wants to sell. Earlier in the season, the supporter trust was trying to put together an offer that fell through. He is still looking to sell and still says that we've repaired the club's financial damage. Honestly, the guy's a financial loon. First bit of potential transfer business, now that we've secured promotion, just offered a contract to Tom Eastman, 34 years old, incredible mental attributes, absolutely fits the Culture Club ethos, still a very good defender, would actually come in as the best central defender at the club. This feels like a very sensible piece of business. He would come in as an important player, he would expect to play quite a lot, but he would probably really set an incredibly high standard in terms of professionalism, determination, all of that stuff that I want from the Culture Club. Right, next up we're away at Maldon and Tiptree, making some significant changes to the team, because now, all of a sudden, I'm quite interested in winning the Velocity Trophy. I was completely deprioritising that before, but now there's £1,500 prize money on offer if we, if we win that competition. So Graxic stays in goal, but the back three is now Finch, Ina and Watson. Vincent and Williams at wing back. We've got Bingham and Swift in midfield with Addy, Amanchi and Noel Williams up front. A fairly dull nil-nil draw is the outcome. Not the best performance though. Important to tell them that I do expect more because I want them firing on all cylinders for the match in the Velocity Trophy final. Eastman has agreed to sign. I think he might well be starting in the Velocity Trophy final. So with that £1,500 available for the winners, we're putting quite a strong team out against Porchester. Trying something new with the back three. Going to play Leslie Smith on the left of the three as a natural left footer. Eastman in the middle and Watson on the right. Then we've got Vincent and McWilliams at wing back. Wharton and Hinshelwood in midfield. Gale back as an advanced playmaker. Bond up in his inside forward role. And Bell as the advanced forward. We got a trophy celebration. Whee! It certainly wasn't our greatest performance. First half was spectacularly dull, but a headed goal from a corner by Leslie Smith got us up and running in the 67th minute. And then a quite frankly delicious pass from Addy to Fonda secured the win for us. And there's that one and a half thousand pounds. Minus the 750 that has to be shared among the squad and backroom staff. So he only won 750 quid. 
Doesn't sound quite as good when you put it like that. Here's the lineup for our final match of an incredible season. We've got Graxic in goal, Hoyle, Eastman and Watson in defence, Vincent and Ina at wing back, Walton and Hinchelwood in midfield, and Gale, Fondup and Bell up front on the bench. Hoping to come on to take part in the celebrations, we've got Wharton, Leslie Smith, Bingham, Addy and Noel Williams. And for the first time all season, finally got there. Nothing but pleased players in terms of these tactics. It wasn't the promotion party we were hoping for. We ended up with a ridiculous formation trying to chase this game. They won 2-0. I think the boys had been out for a beer or two the night before to celebrate their promotion. That wasn't good enough and they must improve. They need to know that going into next season because it's going to be a lot, lot tougher. So we win the league by four points and we end up with the best goal difference. That will do very nicely. Well, we won a whopping £6,000 for achieving first place in the pitching in Ithsmian Premier Division. Can't really see it's made any difference to the finances. Season review time then. What a season it has been. Signing of the season goes to Josh Leslie Smith. Can't argue with that. He has been an absolute solid rock at the back. Also contributed decent number of goals from corners. Fond up. 17 goals from 25 starts and 6 assists as well. Not far off one goal contribution per match. And Graxit, absolute game changer. Disappointed with Sam Bell though. He scored 14 goals from 25 starts, but I was expecting a lot more from a player with 15 finishing. Not the Nathan Minhas replacement that I was hoping for. Unfortunately, the FA Cup didn't really go to plan. Knocked out on penalties in the first qualifying round. For the FA Trophy, we overperformed and reached the fourth round and, of course, won the Velocity Trophy. Our biggest win of the season was 4-0 against Wingate and Finchley. That match to remember, an Addy hat-trick against Hendon. So memorable, I don't really remember anything about it. But the goal of the season came from Gale with a 32-yard free kick. And what a strike it was. That is an incredible distance to take a free kick from right into that top corner. Sponsorship is up. Corporate and hospitality is up. Competition prize money, up. Match day commercial and retail, significantly up. Obviously, player wages went up far, far, far more. And here's the team of the year. Graxit in goal, obviously. Hoyle, Watson and Leslie Smith at the back, as expected. Ballinger and McWilliams at wing back. I think that is fair. Ballinger and Vincent were alternating that role, but Ballinger generally was slightly a higher performer. Hinshelwood and Bingham in midfield. So Bingham beats uh, beats Wharton into the team. And then we've got Addy, Fondup and Bell up front. Maybe Bell's not that bad after all. Is he going to settle in and really take off next year, I wonder? So the fans player of the season is Leslie Smith. Ballinger wins Young Player of the Season. I'm pretty sure he won that for us a few years back as well, before he left the club and rejoined. Addy was our top goal scorer with 17. We definitely did share the goals around this year. McWilliams with 15 assists from wing back. That is very impressive. And Hoyle this year set a record for most league appearances with 154. But the best 11 has a very familiar feel to it, strangely enough. Billy Bingham makes it onto the bench, as does Noel Williams, Leslie Smith and Graxic. Though currently our best 11 of all time is Ormson in goal, Ballinger, Hoyle, O'Dwyer and Williams Lowe at the back with Fonguk, Hinshelwood and Healy in midfield. Dowridge on the right wing still. How is Dowridge still there in our best 11 of all time? And then Douglas and Mullings up front. No room for Nathan Minhas or club record goal scorer and now for the big big question that i've been waiting for what do the board want from us next year how is that fair we were only expected to reach the playoffs this year we happened to win the league and now they want us to finish in mid table well if nothing else this is going to be a fascinating summer i need to find 
some new players to help us play attacking, entertaining, high-tempo, pressing possession football that also makes the most of set pieces and works within our wage budget to finish in mid-table in the National League South. And I thought this season was tough, but I am delighted we've got this far. The Culture Club experiment is continuing to work. I hope you have enjoyed what you've watched today. I've certainly enjoyed sharing it with you. Join us again to find out how our summer goes. Subscribe to the channel. Click on your notifications to find out the second the next video is going to be released. Please drop a like on the video as well. And in the meantime, be excellent to each other. I'm Kirk Sheridan and thank you very much for watching. See you soon.